Dave Ramsey of Diesel is starting to become more popular on the interwebs. Yeah, uh, my apologies to Mr. Ramsey. Let me just say that. If you're out there, please don't have your attorneys please. called. I hope this somehow makes it to him just so he could see this. That would be awesome. Uh, until then, uh, I'm Zach. He's Billy. We are here knocking out all your diesel questions. And, you know, most of the time we try to help people as much as we can occasionally you get people on the phone who as much as you might want to help them, it, it is difficult to do so. Well, either due to like how they're approaching troubleshooting their diesel or, you know, sometimes they, they don't have the budget to, to do it or they have made critical errors and, you know, that that's understandable. Everyone makes mistakes and we're not trying to out anybody for that, but when we have those calls and we get them recorded, it I, I feel that there's value in sharing that with people so that, you know, you can learn from the mistakes of others. Well, yeah, and, and you know, the anytime you step outside, you know, the, the repair norms, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, and I'll give you two that, that are illustrated in this call. One, you never want to put a new part up in conjunction with an old part. And what mm. I mean is, is if you have a set of injectors and you have two, three, four that fail, the rebalance of those injectors are worn almost to the level that they're going to fail. Yeah, you just caught the first one of the set that failed. Exactly. And and so the repair norm is you change a set of injectors. Right. Um, in this case, uh, you know, the, this customer was was trying as a means of troubleshooting um, to, you know, maybe only change um, a portion of the injectors. And they're not, and I'm not saying there are not instances where you can do that. Sure. But it depends on mileage, depends on a number of factors. And then compounded is he is taking parts off of two separate engines. Yeah. And trying to combine them. Not to say, in this instance, it was a 6.9 liter and a 7.3, both IDIs, and there are parts that are interchangeable. But when you start to deal with timing and and then you look at some unknowns, like, okay, you had an engine that failed. What caused it to fail? Was there, you know, and yeah. then you don't know necessarily this other used part you it, it would seem condition. like once you start trying to Frankenstein two different motors together, it, it just compounds the complexities that you're dealing with when troubleshooting. That's exactly right. And, and, and a lot of these decisions are budget driven and I get it. Um, you know, I've, uh, I've owed a dollar and only had a dime in my pocket. So I know what we're talking sure, about. There, there, there's, there's reasons for, for troubleshooting, however you have to do it. Uh, and, but at the end of the day, you know, if you don't troubleshoot correctly, if you don't, change the necessary parts with quality replacements, then you're going to end up either with the same amount of problems or more problems, you know, based on the work that you've done. Well, you you have to have um, a foundation and you have to be able to say, I know unequivocally that this, this, and this are functioning and working. And typically you, you do that when, when you replace the parts with new components. Um, but when you, when you, it, it's kind of just walking into a movie, you know, in the middle, you yeah. don't really know you don't have the context, you don't have the context for everything. And so you're, you're, you're having, you're making, uh, some, you know, you're making decisions based on some unknown facts and, and, um, you're, you're going to be incomplete in your understanding of the process or problem rather. And, and that kind of came out a little bit in this call. Yeah. So with that in mind, let's. Take a look at the call. Okay. Hello. Uh, Dwayne, please. Yes. Hey, Mr. My name's Billy Williams. I work in the tech department of Diesel Care. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I was asked to give you a call just to let you know all my calls are recorded. So uh, if you have to do vulgarity, do it under your breath. Um, <laughs> right. Um, I. I Got a note passed along to me from the salesman. Uh, looks like you've got a seven three six nine combination kind of going on. Tell me what's happening with your truck. Well, I bought a motor first. Well, here come find out. It run good until it put antifreeze in, then hydrolock because it had a hole in the cylinder wall. Ooh. 
Well, I bought another motor, seven or six nine. Mm-hmm. Put it in. Put uh, put everything off the seven three, like the injector pump stuff like that, mm-hmm. and the lines and everything on there. Well, then they told me, well, the jet, the seven three's got bigger plungers in it, so it's going to dump more fuel. So I went back to the six nine injector pump, the original one that was on the motor that I, the second one I bought. Mm-hmm. Got it on there. But it, it's got like some kind of air intrusion because I'm getting every time I go to crank it and I stop and I go and hit the Schrader valve, this bugs air and just very little fuel. Okay. And then, but it'll run and shake like crazy and take hard as heck to start. Which, if it's air intrusion, is going to be hard to start. Correct. That that is absolutely correct. L- let me ask you: Does the chassis have dual tanks or a single tank? Dual. Okay. And the truck runs. What happened was the pickup tube got plugged up mm-hmm. and couldn't get no oil. And it put a, uh, took one of the, the see, second one back on the passenger side cylinder, busted the piston off, and shoved the rod sideways in the box. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, so the truck runs then. Yeah. Let me, let me give you a couple of things here. Um, First off, it's not uncommon to put a seven three on a six nine block. That's that happens all the time. And, okay. And there is. No, I didn't know. That's what. I- <laughs> well, there's the, you. You have to tweak the timing a little bit. But other than that, there's nothing really um, that's. Uh, uh, my apologies. I had a call beeping in here, so forgive me just a second. Um, so, the 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 air itself. Whenever I have a dual tank set up, yes. the first thing that I, I try to do is to see if I've got air coming in on both tanks. So, you know, you, you top both tanks off. Yeah, they're topped off. They're full. Okay. And does it do it on either tank? Have you tried switching them? Yes. Okay. They're on either tank. Then the first thing I would look at is there's a diverter valve that – you know it's it switches from tank to tank yep that's the first place that i would probably look now um those typically are around 100 150 dollars from your napa store whatever right um they're um the ones that napa sells are not exactly like the original uh but they they seem to work well um okay now you can also do what's called an isolation test. And um, what that'll do is you can run the injection pump straight out of a an alternate source of fuel, just make sure it's good and clean because it won't be filtered, um, right. to make sure that you're not getting air in from other sources. I have had um, nozzles that uh, don't seat off properly and compression blows back up in there. Okay. And, and it kind of forces the fuel out. Usually on a dual tank setup, usually one t- if it's a tank problem, obviously one tank, it'll, the problem exists. The other tank, it doesn't. It would be very rare to have both tanks go out simultaneously. Right. Yeah, uh, the truck runs. Right. So I, I, the diverter valve would be suspect. Now, if you run it out of an alternate source of fuel and then you let it sit for eight hours and go back and, and – you're still having a drain down issue, then it it's something, you know, obviously it's something in the power unit. The, the engine for diagnostic purposes is, is, is put up into the supply side, the return side, and the power unit or the engine. Now, right. the, typically the, it's a supply, pri, supply side problem. And yeah, because you're getting there right Right out of the trader valve, ain't even making it to the ejection pump. I don't believe. Right. Well, that's where gravity's taking over, and it's it's just kind of uh, allowing that fuel to, to drain back to the tank. Um, because my filter's still full. That's what I don't understand. I pulled yeah. my filter off yesterday, and it was still full. You might be getting air being pushed into the system from a from a nozzle, um, and. Now that's typically accompanied with uh, bluish black smoke, sometimes white. It's bluish. Bluish. Okay. Yep. Um, Let me bad. Okay. <laughs> I get sprayed for mosquitoes. 
Well, um, That's our bad. <laughs> okay. Um, you, um, I know it said that you had replaced some injectors. You obviously have yep. extra replaced injectors. I replaced O ring kit three times because I had one O ring would one cap that would not seal on the third one back on the passenger side. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I replaced them. We got it yesterday where it was kind of running smooth, but I had that, I mean, the motor was sitting there smooth running, but I have, that has that stupid dual mass flywheel on there. Right. Right. And it's bad because it rocks real easy. Yeah. That, that, those things sound horrendous when they're, uh, Oh yeah. It's, it's horrendous. Cause when it starts to shake, the whole motor starts to shake. Yeah, I've had I've had customers that had a bad dual mass flywheel, and they came in and said, "I need a transmission." <laughs> and I'm like, well, "Right, well, hold they up, break hold the up. training, I guess." So, I, I here's what I would recommend. Um, okay, um, I would recommend running it out of um, an isolation tank. I okay, and I would There's also a mechanical pump so. Yeah, I would look at um, um, now if it if it if you run it out of an isolation tank and the smoke clears up and it tends to run better, then you know from the power unit itself from the what's under the hood you're good. If you okay. still have problems, then you're going to start addressing everything under the hood and work back. Um, I would, um, as far as the injectors themselves. Um, Unless they're a complete new set, if you've got some extras, I'd recommend sending those off, get them pop tested, and get the pressures reset. Okay. Um, should cost you, you know, around $100, 110 dollars, something in those range. Um, just so you know, you've got a good set that someone's put an eye on and said, "Hey, these, these eight injectors are good." Um, okay. And, uh, and then kind of work from there. Also, when you do that, um, isolation test, you want to disconnect your return. And, um, so your return okay. is kind of free flowing because you don't want back. If you get, do have an injector issue, it'll, it'll be kind of forcing itself out on the return side. The fact that you've, you've had to replace that, those O-rings multiple times even indicates to me even further that you might have compression kind of blowing up into uh, your fuel gallery. And uh, okay. so you might be looking at a set of injectors, um, um, but an isolation test will, will give you a good. Uh, just put it in a good gallon of or Yeah, just get you, a good, diesel. get you a good, you know, three, five gallon bucket of fuel. It goes through fuel for pretty fast because it returns a lot of it, obviously. What do you but, do with the return line? Block it off? Well, I, unless you're someplace where they're super sensitive about fuel draining out on the ground, I just open it up. Um, now, I don't care probably, where I live. It ain't going to hurt. Well, there's live probably in Ohio. some <laughs> tree huggers out here who will get after me, but but the bottom line is is you want that return to have no back pressure on it. Okay. Um, and... and um, now, if you run it in out of a bucket of fuel while it's running, and as you say, wow, it's running really good, I go ahead and hook the return up. And if it mm-hmm. starts running like crap, well, then I know I need to look in the return side. Okay. And so, so you know, you're, you're, you're basically isolating it into three different components for troubleshooting. On the supply side, your diverter valve could be suspect. That's, that, okay. that's still on the table. On the power unit right. side, you might be looking at an injector which would affect the return side as well. And that's, you'll know that when you're, when you're running it with the, um, with the return disconnected. Okay. And, um, other than that, um, you know, this is my cell number. Just give me a call back. If you have any further questions and if we can help you in any way, let us know. All right. We'll do. All right. Thank you now. Thank you. Bye. So, uh, Dwayne, no hard feelings. Um, but, we, uh, we hopefully can learn a little bit from this call so that we can help others out there who may be going through similar things with, with an IDI engine. Um, just to review, he, he had the 7.3 IDI, the engine was locked up, um, and he took the injectors and put them in a 6.9 IDI. Right. 
Which is perfectly acceptable. Same ejector. Right, right. Uh, so that led to he was having a hard start. He bought a 6.9 liter pump, uh, so he replaced that. But the injectors kept blowing O-rings. I think he was on like his third set of O-rings when he called. Right. And and anytime you have O-rings that are being blown out because of pressure, that is a very, very low pressure return system mm-hmm. on the IDIs. Um, either it's blocked up somewhere. Right. And so you're getting back pressure that eventually builds and builds and builds. Or because he's had some injector issues, um, he could have compression that's being blown up through the injector, mm. and that pressure is blowing those O rings. And okay. um, so we recommended that he that he pull the injectors, have them all checked, the complete all, set. Yeah, get, just get everything checked. Um, I don't think he bought the pump from us. He bought it from somewhere else. Sounds like the pump is fine. Doesn't sound like that. Mm -hmm. We also recommended that he really performance time this, you know, he was just lining it up. You, when you, when you've got this pump from this motor and so you can't really do that. You have to really perform and performance time it. And we went over that with him. I think he's got, uh, uh, in the end, I think he'll get it fixed. Sure. Um, He's going to spend a lot more time, and at the end of the day, most things in life come down to time or money. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, so he probably did save some money, probably spent some additional time. Yeah, it's it's whichever one you have more of uh, but, as a resource. Uh, but you know, we uh, if you've if you've got the money to do the job right, absolutely, that's the way you want to go. And when you're in this type of situation. Um, you know, you're just going to spend a little bit more time and you're going to have to approach things differently. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, uh, we gave Dwayne good information and hopefully he'll get it running. Yep. So we wish him all the best of luck. Uh, as always, if you have questions about your diesel and you want to schedule a tech call, reach out to us at 1-800-961-9290. Learn more about our company at www.dieselcare.store. Be sure to like, and subscribe. We will see you next week. I've been Zach. And I've been Dave Ramps, uh, Billy Williams. <laughs> Shoot the highway. <laughs> Shoot to see you. Yes, I'm built out and bound to go. I'm going to leave, leave here running. Because walking is most too slow. All right, back to one.